It's your girl CC with WIB Magazine, and I got my co-host Mickey Monday on the line with us. Hey, Mickey, how are you today on this Tuesday? I'm doing pretty good, you know, keeping um keeping high spirits up, you know, trying to be positive and during this time of um you know social unrest, civil unrest. So yeah. Okay, well we got a special guest, one of my homies, one of my friends. <laughs> Um, from the 912 area code. Hey, Big Nick, how are you today? What's going on with you? Nothing, nothing. Just trying to be safe and still quarantining with everything going on. Yeah, yeah. I'm the same way. Cool. Well, let's start off with, you know, this is one of everybody's questions. Is What made you even want to be a producer and an artist? Well, I actually started playing instruments like in the fifth grade. So it's always made music. You know, play the saxophone and play the, and play the piano and stuff. And um, shoot, I always liked the music and stuff. So when I hit high school, I really started rapping. And when I hit college, everything kind of came together. You know what I'm saying? Like, I started learning how to make beats when I went to college. Because a lot of my roommates and stuff used to have Fruit Loops and stuff. And a lot of my homeboys used to make beats. So I kind of learned how to make beats when I went to college and stuff. Like at Savannah State. And then I just tied it in with, with the rap stuff. And it seemed like my beat stuff started taking off a little faster than my rap, so I just started doing that more, you know, and just started just, you know, doing all that. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I can um, I can kind of relate to that because I, I learned how to make beats and produce on FL Studio too, so um, right. I'm completely well versed in that. Um, but as far as you being a music producer, um, like, what other genres of music have actually influenced you the most, would you say? Aside from like rapping and R and B and things like that, like what what's some other what are some other um places of music that that you draw inspiration from? Believe it or not, gospel. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I like that, and I like blues. You know what I'm saying? That kind of yeah. inspired it too. You know, stuff like that. Okay. I would have never knew that. Hey, do, wow. you, do you have any any notable artists that that um, come to mind? You know, like the Louis, like the Louis Armstrong. You know, the people like back in the day, like in New Orleans, especially Memphis, they had like a lot of soul and blues and like bands and stuff. And that and that type of music used to always inspire me. Like that, like I always thought that was dope. Cause like I said, when I was in the fifth grade, we was in the band. With, it was like, you know, what I'm saying concert band or like football band. So it never was no soul or no blues like that. It had like a lot of bass guitars. A lot of mm-hmm. Trump, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. It really wasn't that. So I always thought that was kind of dope. It is. That's what's up. Yeah. And, and like then as, f- as far as uh like so being a music like I said, being a music producer, as far as um having your own sound and um having people right. kind of gravitate towards you, would you consider yourself a, a somewhat of a mogul? Um do you have any uh you know, you have any other additional business ventures or I know about um, your label, Beat Addicts. Is there anything that you can kind of give us on that? Kind of just uh, give us a little bit more detail on, on you know, how you operate as an artist. Yeah, like I'm like I'm real big on fashion, and I actually got my own clothing brand called New Rich, and I've been uh-huh. figuring out all the ins and outs of how to get that done. So inside my crib, I'm about to make a media room. You know what I'm saying? So I'm about to have a T-shirt press there, a green screen, and I want to get a sewing machine because I want to learn like embroidery, you know what I'm saying? Because I mm-hmm. thought that looked sharp. And stuff is always getting the press on stuff, the press on stuff. It looked cool for like one or, one or two wears, but after a while it started looking bad. So I really want to learn how to sew and do all that type of stuff too, because the only way to get rich is to have multiple revenue streams. So, you know, music is only one on, but eventually you got to keep branching off and branching off and branching off and just keep, you know, building. Okay, okay. For sure. And, well, what is one of your biggest challenges being a producer? Not having a not having not not having a not having a closed mindset. And what I mean by that is you're gonna work with a lot of 
people that lost. Like, they don't really know their sign. They don't know what they want to do. They don't know how they want to come. They don't know nothing. So they really looking at you for everything, and you got to be open. Then I had to understand, also, some people not making music like the, like to get rich or to get on. Some people making music just because it's a hobby. Some people making music just to get out the just to get out the streets for a couple of hours and just chill. You know, everybody don't got the same goal. So I had to understand that having a, having a recording studio and everybody coming through booking sessions and stuff, and everybody not trying to get on. You know, some people use the studio and as a place of reference. I mean, what they call it, uh, refuge. You know what I'm saying? Like they just want to come get out the streets for a while, while and just kick it where they caught it. You know, some people like spending their money like that. You know, they don't want to. They not. They not trying to do shows or drop drop no songs and that. Mm. They just want to come in there and play around. <laughs> so, so yeah, what makes your 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 beats or your music or your style different than everybody else's style? Then, well, and I and I'm really hands on with my records, and I don't just make beats and send them out to people and let them do what they want to. I produce the whole record from the front to the end, even to when it comes to the mix and the master part. I'm hands on with that part too, so it's like, and I produce people. It's a it's a difference. You know what I'm saying? If you just make beats, you ain't a producer. You ain't producing nothing. You just made a beat. You know what I'm saying? That's the whole difference. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Part of the process, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Cause what was cause what was going on ten years ago? I was sending beats, and I was just hoping they'd make a five song to my beat. And a lot of times they wouldn't. And I'd be like, dang, they was this close to getting it right, but I just wasn't in the studio with them because I was just emailing beats, emailing beats. After a while, you got to get more hands-on with your craft if you want to see your stuff go up. You know what I'm saying? So I started being there with them. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of artists, I might make the beat from scratch right in front of them in the studio and work on it, and work on it all the way from like that. You know? Mm. And my music started coming out better and as a whole. You know what I'm saying? Like, it started coming out better. Because one thing that killed me is I hate making a hard ass beat and then a, and then the artist fumble on it. Like he don't put a good concept to it or he don't he don't put a good song or it don't sound good mix right and just and that just killed the whole record. So I got tired of wasting beats. I feel like I was wasting beats. Hmm. That'll do it to you. <laughs> That'll do it definitely you, do man. it to you for sure. So yep. let me let me ask you a question because you just mentioned that you had a clothing label coming out and it's called New Rich, right? right. So just kind of thinking globally, you know, say right. everything starts coming together, you know, you, you get a big break, you know, your music's doing, it's, you know, it, it's succeeding really good, you know, you get a label deal or whatever. What would be the first thing you plan to do to give back to your community once you, you know, say once you start bringing in you know, what you what you think is enough to live off of and, you know, take care of your family members, of course, but once right. you get to that point, what, what, what would you say would be the first thing you would do to give back to the community? It just depends on what they need and at the time, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, sometimes they need somebody to talk to them for real. Sometimes they might need money and school supplies or stuff. It just mm -hmm. depends on what it is. But with me personally, do you know how they got like a, uh, like a boys and girls club or YMCA type stuff? Yeah. I want to open up something similar, but I want it music oriented. And the main reason why is a lot of kids, some of them not eligible to play sports in high school. Some of them not physically able to play sports in high school. They might want to be tall enough, big enough, fast enough, but I still want them to have a purpose. I feel like, I feel like they got a purpose. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Even the kid that might get kicked, even the kid that might got the bad, that might got the bad grades. I still want him to be able to do something. You know what I'm saying? So I think if I did that, you know, you don't got to be fast or tall to make music. You don't got to be nothing to make music. You don't got to have fly clothes to make beats. I know you can stay right. behind the scenes and make your music, you know, and just teaching them a skill like that. That's almost like, I ain't going to lie, it's almost like teaching them how to cut hair. It's giving them a trade almost in a sense because mm -hmm. the thing is, everybody's trying to rap nowadays, everybody. So you can have a studio and do your thing just like a barber do his thing. Every day I wake up, I do the same thing. I have four or five sessions every day. Every day, people booking three to four hours a piece. That's my whole. That's my whole day. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm just like a barber, being a, you know, working on my craft every day. For sure, it's it's actually crazy you mentioned that because I know me personally, I've been working on writing up 
um, and like you know, a, a five hundred one, a C three. That's yeah, that's that's what it. You know, that's what you need right. for um, a nonprofit. And it's kind right. of it's kind of similar to what you're doing too. Except, so I'm in, I'm based in DC, so I will be right. doing something similar like that too. So that's that's actually a pretty good idea to have right. an outlet yeah. for for kids like that. Yeah, because like I say, man, so everybody not able to play football, basketball, all this other stuff. You know, maybe they got it. Maybe they got a, maybe they got something else to offer to the world. You know, right. you'll never know. You know what I'm saying? Unless you give them an outlet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and then just take that chance. These, and see half of these kids that's bad and stuff, they are talented at rapping and making music. It's just people don't give them a chance because they bad, so they don't never put them in that type of environment to see what other, you know, attributes they have. So mm-hmm. if I can just keep them out the street for a little while, you know what I'm saying? That might save their life. Just like now, I'd be having people hit me up like, Nick, a lot of those people be in your studio that you be posting, they, they trash or why you, you know what I mean? I'm like, bro, it's, and it's something way, way more deeper going on right now than, you know, making music. Just they want to get out the streets for a while and just let their guard down for a while and chill for a while. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these right. kids don't got their own cribs, so they don't got nowhere to hang with their homeboys for real. Unless they go rent a hotel room. Wow. So they rather download some beats off YouTube, have fun, punching in, rapping, playing around. They're smoking and chilling with their partners in the studio for seven, eight hours. That that what they want to do. That's what they want to do. You know what I'm saying? I rather them. I rather them do that than to be out robbing somebody or breaking somebody's car. You know. For sure. Right. Yeah. That's that's amazing. It's deep. The music still get deep. You know what I'm saying? So, you know how it go. I get you. I get you. So let me ask you a question. Um, can you give me something about you that nobody knows about Big Nick? Something. Go ahead. Like, like what? Anything. Anything that people, you know, people look at you as a producer or artist. They look at you as, you know, that side. But the right. other side of you, Big Nick, Nick, you know, give us something that people don't know about you. A fun fact. Mm. It could be anything. I'm trying to think, man. It's like everything's so regular. Like everybody like going shopping. I love going shopping. That's like ther- that's like therapeutic for me going shopping and stuff. But I, I just told you, I, like I'm big on clothes and fashion. I like that. But that you know, people like to tell that just, just, just by looking at me. I'm trying to say, um, all right. I like watching old. I like watching old martial art movies. They got the subtitles at the bottom. So you know what I'm saying? Chinese type karate movies and stuff. I be watching that type of stuff. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? I know that's kind of odd, but shit, I don't know. I just like uh, the type of shit, all Bruce Lee movies and shit. Those are, those be the best movies sometimes because it's it's all so right. much action in it. The act that there's so much fighting in it, and the fighting seems to be so good. The acting don't even have to be, you know what I'm saying? It don't even have to be on point. So yeah, you know all of but see all of the movies and the reason I like them, they all got the same real moral to every story. Somebody did something to their wife or. Somebody did something to the, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. This got a yeah. lot of, I don't know. I just like the old Chinese fighting movies from time to time, you know. And uh, I like traveling too. I've been traveling a lot. Like this past month and a half, I don't went to the cabins two or three times. Up in, I see. And up in Tennessee, and I take a different group of people every time during this coronavirus. Yeah. I've been seeing you. I've been seeing you. I say every time I turn around here in the cabins. And now we're going to the Myrtle Beach this weekend. It's taking a bunch of people like that. I just like getting. I just like getting. I just like. like I just like get to change the scenery. Like, mm-hmm. like I bring my. Uh, like I bring my laptop and stuff with me when I go, and I make beats and stuff too while I'm gone. So it's just having different visuals and stuff and being around different stuff inspire my beats and stuff. So, I want to sit on the beach and make some beats. Or I want to sit at the top of a mountain and make some beats. That's like getting. Around, you know what I'm saying? Just, just you know mm-hmm. moving around, mm-hmm. and just living. You know, for real. Well, you know, I have to ask this question. With everything going on in the world, how do you feel about this protesting? I just have to throw it out there. He ain't even protesting at this point. It's a bunch of broke niggas being opportunity. Like that's all really going on. They they breaking their businesses. That's black on, and a lot of people don't even be doing their due diligence to see if it's black or not. They don't care. They just opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They taking advantage of this, these people that done passed. And using it, and using it, and using it, and using it for their personal gain, you know. And I think that's real weak. You know what I'm saying? Like it don't make sense. Yeah. No, you know, I, I agree. Mm-hmm. Athletes foot on by a black dude. They broke in that stuff. 
they been they breaking in everything. They weren't ain't even about black on the net. You know what I'm saying? This is just about them. They they worried about they their self and why all the cops are congregated downtown trying to do something that leaves a little window opportunity to do this type of stuff. Cause they know where every like like they know where every cop at right now. You know what I'm saying? All of them be down downtown. So that's why they broke into you know you know, ice box and all them stores in Linux trying to mess with them and stuff and nobody wasn't around that around that area. You know, they're just being jays, you know, they're breaking in stuff, just just, just looting. They ain't even protesting no more. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't really, I don't like that because the whole city going to suffer for it because now they've been shutting down Walmart in certain spots real early, closing down the mm. malls real early. I can't even go in there and shop no more. Mm. Yeah. Or you, or you have, um, you have people who are, aren't even a part of the protest who just come down there and, and they just, like you said, they take that opportunity to just to loot and incite violence where, you know, there are actually people down there who are really in it for the cause. Yeah, I, right. I completely get it. I completely get it. I'm talking about regular people getting robbed down there and regular people cars getting broken into and vandalized. Right. It ain't just police cars. It's everybody catches right. right. That's the, that's the, that's the, that's the, that's the most, that's the most crazy part about it. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody wow. getting hit. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's very yeah. disappointing. But yeah. You know, just just to kind of keep you on track with your music, you know, I just wanted to see what what you think about um, performing. So I've seen some of your videos and, um, you know, I was looking at a couple of your videos, too. I saw um, you had an interview, too, on the radio station, which is pretty dope. And um, and just out of like uh, out of working with a lot of artists and, you know, producing for a lot of artists and then also you being an artist yourself. What what are some of the things you look for in an artist when they're doing a live performance like? What are some things that you see that, you know, kind of make you gravitate towards that artist or will make you draw away and say, you know what, they're not, they're not doing it right? Well, for one, I want to see, all right, when you want to, when you want to, when you want to stage performance, you don't want to stay in that same two or three foot radius. You want to work the whole stage. You feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I want to see if they got the, you know, when they got the mic, they could, they taking control of the crowd and and the DJ, they might tell them to stop to bring it back, turn me up, you know what I'm saying? Just talk and just interact and show the and show that massive confidence. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. I like that type of stuff in a performance. I like seeing the dude on stage with maybe one other person. I don't like seeing the nigga up there with 30, 40 people, because it's easy to because it's kind of easy to go do a show then, but it's actually more harder when you you know what I'm saying, like up that dolo, up mm-hmm. there really working the stage and really taking control of a whole crowd. Like that's like that's real impressive to me, you know what I'm saying? Like it's real power almost. You know, you up there really working your move in front of everybody by your by yourself without having a million niggas with you. You know what I'm saying? I look yeah. and I look for that and I, and I look for that kind of stuff. Cause you know some people hit the stage and they stand in one spot the whole time. Right. You know what I'm saying? They don't really be working it like they don't really be working it and put on a good and put on a good show. A lot of people don't know how to put on a good show no more. That's true, yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So what is one of your biggest accomplishments you had so far being a producer or being here in Atlanta? Um, uh, I don't know. That's a hard one. That's, that's a hard one to have. I mean, I don't know. I guess getting a song on the radio so far. Mm, probably something like that. Hmm. Uh, I know you have a lot of accomplishments. You don't work with um, a lot of people in the rap game with um, the teenagers. You, right. you got a lot of accomplishments to, you know. Well, I ain't gonna lie. One of the girls I was working with and producing, Flage, she was on America's Got Talent, and she was on the rap game, and she got the and she got the uh and she got got the key to the city down in Savannah. You know what I'm saying? Last year, like that was crazy. She went on two national TV shows and got the key to the city in one year. And we did all her music and at my wow. studio and made, and made all the beats and stuff. So that was pretty dope. You know what I'm saying? I, I got a couple artists that I'm being like on the radio and stuff. A couple artists I've been producing. Uh, they went on love and they went on love and hip hop and stuff. So it's like, you know, I don't know. I mean, I guess I got some accomplishments. I guess the more I think about them, but 
And I try not to think about it. I just wanted to, you know, I just wanted to stay hungry and grinding. I don't really get lost in my own sauce because just thinking about accomplishments. So a lot of time I don't even, a lot of time like, I just forget them and just keep it, you know what I'm saying? Just, you know what I'm saying? Keep it moving and keep it pushing. So, so what is one of your biggest accomplishments you're trying, well, one of your biggest goals you're trying to reach right now? I'm trying to get a number one on the billboard, but I'm trying to get a number one in the country type stuff. Like, I get tired of just getting, getting um, you know, album placements and mixtape placements and stuff. I really need to get, like, a some, like a real number one record. That's what, that what I really need. You know what I'm saying? Because this really is like a uh, accolade business. It ain't about how talented you are. It's about who can show their plaques and show that, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. All, their accom- yeah. all their accomplishments and stuff. Because a lot of these niggas, like, they got plaques. I'm just talented as them, or maybe even more. You know what I'm saying? But it ain't about that. It's about who got the hardware and who can, you know, and who can name drop and brag and all that stuff. That would be, that would be, that would be feeling like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, I don't got no label. I don't got no financial people backing me in that. I'm just independently doing it. So it's going to, it's going to take a little longer, but it's moving. So, you know, I ain't, I ain't tripping. You know what I'm saying? Okay. For sure. Yeah, I ain't sure. Okay. Well, Mickey Monday, you have any other questions for him before we go on our trivia? Uh, no, actually, you know, Nick, you've answered everything pretty well. And, you know, you seem like a very smart and talented guy. So, yeah, that's that's all I have for you, man. You, you did pretty good. Right. I tried to throw some hard it. questions at you, too, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, Big Nick, we're going to do a trivia question for you. Um. Mickey Monday, we go, I'm gonna let you start out first. Okay, for sure. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, All right, bro. Uh, be, you know, being being so heavily involved in music, what what would you say is your first album? And uh, what was what would you say is your first album that you purchased or owned? And how would that album shape you musically? You know, as an artist. The first album I ever ever bought was probably a Bone Thugs and Harmony double disc CD they had. And I bought that Master P C D thing was called True to the Game or True. It was a and it was a double disc too. I bought them too when I was mm-hmm. like little. I had to be like in middle school. I saw they were my first first little songs I bought, like CDs. Okay. Your biggest your first um song that you made. Oh that inspired you and molded you. One of the first well, one of my first placements I got was somebody major was a uh, soldier boy. Okay. okay. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I did that back in like 2007. It was a song called "Crank That Billy Jean," and that went on YouTube and stuff. I remember <laughs> yeah. that. That's crazy. Yeah, I, yeah, that, say, was my, I remember that, that too. Was, that was that was my beat. Yeah. Wow. Crank that Billy Jean. That's crazy. Yeah, with okay. Showtime MT, and then Soldier Boy ended up jumping on it, and they sampled that to make Whoop. Walt Rico. So without creating that Billy Jean, it wouldn't have been no Walt Rico. No, that's still what it been going on. Wow. Wow. Well, my trivia question is different. So my trivia question is, if you had to join one of these people's team, who would you choose and why? Kanye, Timberland, or Swiss Beats? I like Timberland. Okay. And why would you choose him out of the three? Cause he funky, like he he took he took Godzilla, the the, the dinosaur Godzilla, sampled that to make some certain songs for Leo. You know what I'm saying? Like he took he be taking stuff around him and making beats, and I be thinking that's so impressive and dope. You know what I'm saying? Like I like that type of stuff. Like that's still cool to me. You know, I like his percussion and stuff. All uh, that stuff too. His drums. He just real funky, man. I just like his, I like his music, you know. So, what could you give inspirational to an artist that's trying to get into the music industry? It's a marathon, not a sprint. So it's like a lot of these cats trying to get on, thinking this some old get rich quick scheme, and ain't none of that. You just gotta have a real passion for this and make your music for you. And what I mean by that is, you can record a song. It don't matter what nobody else thinks for real at the end of the day because they're not qualified to get no opinion if they're not in the music game. So it don't matter what 
Joe Blow down the street think about your song. If you like your record, go with your record. You know what I'm saying? Make your music for you. You know what I'm saying? And if the and if the rest of the world end up liking it, that's what's up. But if not, make your music for you. So like with me, and I make my beats. I don't ask nobody, do y'all like this? Do y'all think? It don't matter what they think at the end of the day. I'm going to make my music for me. You know what I'm saying? And luckily for me, people just end up liking it. But that's the kind of mindset you got to have. Because if you, if you listen to what 10 people say, you one thing about it, you can't satisfy everybody. So it's like somebody always going to have a pen. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. don't even worry about it. Stuff. Just make your music for you. And just keep pushing and just don't never give up. You know what I'm saying? I'm still I'm still trying now. So it's like, you know, it's a marathon in a sense. You know, it ain't gonna happen overnight, but it might won't happen in two, three, five years. You know, just gotta keep pushing. If you like making music, make it. You know. Okay. Well, I got one more question for you before we get off. Uh, and then um, so who is who is somebody you would wanna work with? Or even collab with, as an artist, as a producer, who is that one person? I ain't gonna lie, man. I grew up in the trap era, like for real, for real. Like when I was a teenager, and stuff. A lot of Jeezy and Gucci was out there and stuff. You know, I was my favorite producers was like Shardy Red, Drama Boy, Fat Boy, uh, Zaytoven. You know what I'm saying? Like I came in that area right there. You know what I'm saying? Like for real, that's when I really started making beats. Like when I started making beats, DJ Toon T.I. dropped the trap music and all that stuff. It was around that era right there. Just I like DJ Toon too a lot. Like, like those are the, those are my main producers that kind of molded me. You know what I'm saying? It really got me wanting to start to make beats. You know what I'm saying? Them guys, all them folks are hard. Okay, okay. Well, I want to say thanks for interviewing with us. And congrats oh, for God. everything you have going on. All right, I appreciate it. Tell everybody where they can follow you at. Big Nick 912 on everything. That's Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, Gmail, Big Nick 912 across the board. That's it. N-I-C-K, Big Nick 912. Okay, and do you have any other projects coming out this year? I know we got all this craziness going on, but I know you've been working real hard. Do you have anything new coming Stick out? Stick Talk Josh. Stick Talk Josh. We just wrapped up his tape. He the one got the high song out. Stick Talk Josh tape about to drop. And he gonna be he gonna be a game changer because his content different than the rest of these young cats and his voice different. He got a voice like if you could put Young Thug and Roddy Rich together, if you can just picture that with some soul. That's his, that's his, that's his, that's his, that's his, that's his sound. So, like, that's a crazy ass voice, but that's, that's his sound. And he, he got something on the radio right now called Ha. So. Yeah, I checked them out. I actually posted them on one of my pages on one of his videos. Yeah, a little bro going, going up. They go there playing the song literally at every club, every time we go out. I, and I hear it. That's how I know that, that we're on the right that we're on the right track, you know, 10K Entertainment, that's who we with, so, you know, shout out to them boys, you know, they're helping push the records and stuff. Okay, well, everybody know that, you know, they got you on your team, you're a real humble and cool dude, a Libra but, game all day, so, yeah. you know, as Libra, Libras, we stay having everybody on balance, so. All right, that's it. <laughs> all right, well, thanks for interviewing with us, and you enjoy your rest of your day. All right, y'all too. All right.